This is the fifth and final lecture in Unit 2. It's called If That. It says, a nation that is afraid to let its own people judge the truth and falsehood in an open market is a nation that is afraid of its people by JFK. So the learning goals for this particular presentation are that students be able to pick the proper equation to solve a kinematics problem and that you understand the relationship between the five kinematics variables. So, so far we've looked at four different uh, kinematics motion equations and those four kinematics motion equations are right, shown right here and what you see is how do we know which equation to use where. And how we do that is each one of these is a, is a combination of these five different variables. You have initial velocity, you have final velocity, you have displacement, you have acceleration, and you have time. But in each one of these equations, you are missing one of these variables. For example, in the, equ the equation that's missing time is a equals vf squared minus vi squared uh, divided by 2 delta d. The equation that's missing, or excuse me, final velocity is delta d equals vit plus one-half at squared. The one that's missing displacement is a equals vf minus vi over t. And the final equation, the one that's missing acceleration, is our original equation that we started off with, which was delta d equals one-half vf plus vi, parentheses t. Now, if you see, every single one of these equations is missing one particular variable. And notice they all have initial velocity. So what we, get in, what we do is we choose the equation based on not what we have, but what we don't have. And so in picking the right equation, we use one. We read the question. The, the problem solving principle you're going to do is you circle the goal. What are you trying to find? And then you underline the keywords and numbers. So the first thing that you do is you read the question. Determine how long it will take the car initially at rest to be accelerated from 60 to 100, uh, 260 meters in 100 meters. So the first thing you do is you circle the goal. How long? How long indicates to me a time. So that lets me know what I'm trying to find. Okay, now we can match the units with the assigned information in the question. For example, rest lets me know that it is at a velocity of zero. So I can say that the initial velocity is zero. When I say 60 meters per second, that means that the next velocity has to be a final velocity. And that final velocity goes right here. The next thing that I do is I say, all right, well, this right here is a displacement. Okay, the displacement would come right here at 100 meters and then I know that I'm trying to solve for time so if you look there's one variable in which I have no information for and that's this right here this acceleration I have no information for acceleration you might be saying well you have no information for time either and that is correct but that is what I'm trying to find so now to pick the correct equation I say the variable that I have no information for determines the equation. So I say which one of the equations that I have is the one that is missing this delta, excuse me, this acceleration term. So I would pick the proper equation. That equation would be the one that lacks acceleration, which in our case would be uh, 1 half VF plus VI, close parentheses T, is equal to the displacement. So that's the proper way to choose an equation. Now if that can simplify this easily. If that is a mnemonic that's designed to help you remember what you're supposed to do. If that stands for initial velocity, final velocity, displacement, acceleration, and time. If every kinematics motion equation problem starts off with, you put if that. And then what you do is you say, which one am I missing? Which one do I not have? Which one am I trying to find? It will make your life much easier as far as trying to pick the correct equation. So here's a proficient level question. It says, Usain Bolt accelerates from rest to 44 miles per hour in 40 meters and then continues at 44 miles per hour for the rest of the 100 meter race. How long will it take Usain Bolt to finish the race? Now this is actually a particularly difficult question and here's the reason why. There are two different parts to this problem. You have before and then you have the continuation. Okay, So before is where he is accelerating and after is when he has constant velocity. The constant velocity part is the really easy part. Remember, the kinematics motion equations that we have, that we've described, are the ones that describe the, the motion of an accelerating object. 
Okay, Usain Bolt is not accelerating in the, in the second part of the race. So you would say delta D is equal to 60. The reason why it's 60 is there was a 100 meter race and he accelerated for 40 meters of it. Well, for the remaining 60 meters, he, he remained at a constant velocity. We can also calculate, or we also know what the velocity is. Now, the velocity is written as 44 miles per hour, so that's something that I'm going to have to contend with. It's not going to work for me. So the next thing that I need to do is I'm going to have to convert 44 miles per hour into meters per second. Now, you should be familiar with this conversion. We've done this particular conversion quite a bit. So I'm just going to go ahead and say that the velocity is 19.7 meters per second. Now, when you do that, you know that this is a constant velocity equation. So you can solve for the time. Time is question mark. V equals D over T, or in our case, 19.7 equals 60 over T. You would multiply both sides by T, and when you do that, I'm going to go ahead and just make a little room right here. When you do that, you would get 19.7 T equals 60 when you multiply both sides by t. Divide both sides by 19.7 and you end up with a time for him moving at a constant velocity of about oh it's about four excuse me 3.05 seconds. Now that's only part of this particular problem. This is the part when he's going at a constant velocity. Next you have to figure out how long it takes for him to do the accelerated part of this equation. So we do if that. Remember, anytime something accelerates, we have if that. Now I know it says how long will it take Usain Bolt to finish the race. So once again, I'm trying to solve for time. Acceleration doesn't say it here. This 44 miles per hour I know I've already converted, so I know that that's the final velocity of 19.7 meters per second. I know he started from rest, so I know I have an initial velocity of zero. And that I know he accelerated over 40 meters. So acceleration is the one variable that I don't have or care about. At that point, I can choose the equation that doesn't have acceleration in it, and that would be delta D equals one half VF plus VI T. Or in this particular case, you would say 40 equals one half of 19.7 plus 0 times t. In order to solve this, you already have a t that's kind of here by itself, but you've got to get rid of these other terms. The easiest thing to do is to go ahead and say 19.7 plus 0 is a number, then divide that number by 2, and whatever that particular number is, then you would divide both sides by that number. And if you were to do the math out, it looks like it'd be about 9.85. So if you divide both sides out by 9.85, you end up with a time of 4.07 seconds. So now the question is this. I have two times. I want to know how long it'll take him to finish the race, but I have these two times for the two different parts of the race. If this is the time for the first 40 meters, and this is the time for the 60 meters that follows that, to find the total time of the race, all I need to do is add those together, and I would get a total time of 7.12 seconds. Next, this is a jet fighter takes off from a 120 meter runway. It says that the plane starts from rest and accelerates for 3.4 seconds before taking off. What is the acceleration of the jet? So in this case, you would say, I have a distance. I have an initial, or let's go ahead and do the if that. That'll make it easier for us to be consistent. We'll say if that. You have a 120 meter runway. The plane starts from rest. The time it takes is 3.4 seconds. And it says what is the acceleration of the jet? So I want to know what the acceleration is. At that point the only thing that I don't have or care about is the final velocity. So I would look at my reference sheet, the formula chart, and I would say which one of these equations does not have final velocity in it? And that's the equation delta D equals VIT plus one-half AT squared. At this point, you would substitute your numbers in, and you would say 120 equals zero plus one-half A 
3.4 squared. And some of you may be saying, you forgot to put a 3.4 right there. And yes, I did, but remember, 0 times 3.4 is going to be 0. So that term is going to cancel out anyway. Well, once you get here, it's just a simple matter of, uh, matter of plugging it into your calculator. Uh, when you do that, you're going to get an acceleration of 20.76 meters per second squared. Now check to make sure that you get this answer by algebraically rearranging. Okay, So this would simplify to you'd have 120 equals 3.4 squared divided by 2, or 1 half times um, 3.4 squared, which is 5.78. So you'd have 5.78a, divide both sides by 5.78, and you would get 20.76. Next we have the proficient A3. It says a ball is thrown straight up in the air at 20 meters per second. How long will it take to reach its highest point? So when you initially read this first question, you would look at it and say, wow, you know, there's no real information that's there. So let's go ahead and start with the whole idea. It says a ball is thrown straight up, so that's going to help us a little bit, at 20 meters per second, and I'm looking for how long. Okay, if you do this, you would say, if that. The initial velocity is 20 meters per second. Okay. The final velocity, it says how long will it take to reach its highest point? Remember when a ball goes up, 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 and it reaches its highest point, at its highest point right before it starts to turn around and go back down, it has a velocity of zero. And then finally, we always know that whenever you throw something in the air, or you drop something, the acceleration due to gravity is a constant negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So because of that, I always know the acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So even though in this question there was only one number that was explicitly stated, there were two others that were given just because of the nature of the problem. Now the question asked me to solve for how long, so in this case, I don't care about distance or displacement at all. So I would choose the equation that doesn't have displacement, and that would be acceleration is equal to final velocity minus initial velocity divided by time. Or 0 minus 20 divided by t equals negative 9.8. Okay, in order to solve this, okay, in order to solve this, I would multiply both sides by t, and I would get negative 9.8t equals negative 20. I would divide both sides by negative 9.8. In doing so, the negative signs cancel out, and what I'm left with is a time of 2.04 seconds.